This is your typical oval clearing tray. In order to carry this tray properly, you would place it on top of your hand, centering it underneath the tray. And you want to face it lengthwise, not widthwise, because your profile will be too wide. So holding the tray like this, you want it up over your shoulder, which is very important. You can rest it on your shoulder. You can use this hand to help guide it, but it needs to be up over your shoulder. Never carry a tray like this. Never carry a tray out to the side. Always up over your shoulder. If you feel you need this hand to guide it, that is fine. If you want to put it up on your fingertips, if you're strong enough to do that, that is okay, but that is not necessarily proper as long as it is up over your shoulder. Okay, when you carry your tray and you want to place it onto a tray jack, you would approach your tray jack so that the hinge is facing you. Do not have the tray jack like this or it will fold up on you. When you approach your tray jack, it is okay to kneel down or take a knee. Rest the tray on the edge of the tray jack, reach under with the other hand, and hold the tray jack and slide the tray onto the tray jack. When picking up your tray from your tray jack, you would do the same thing but in reverse. So you kneel down or take a knee, you would slide your tray off to the edge of the tray jack while holding it with the other hand. Be careful you do not get your hand caught in these straps. You want to get your hand under, get under the center of the tray and stand up. The reason that we kneel down or lower ourselves to beat our tray jack is because if we have a very heavily loaded tray and we try to slide our hand out, it is very awkward. It is also very hard on your lower back. So that is why when you approach your tray jack, you want to take a knee and rest it down, with there, thereby eliminating that motion of having to remove your hand from under the tray. And once again in reverse. So we're no longer having to do this. To reinforce what I was just demonstrating, now I have a loaded tray. As you can see, this is very high, so that it's, not going, it's going to be a little bit top heavy. It also be, may be very heavy. But between the plates, the food, and the plate covers, there's a lot of weight on this tray. It now becomes much more awkward. So in order to pick this up, I want to take a knee. I want to slide the tray off to the edge of the tray jack. Careful not to get my hands caught in these straps. I want to center my palm under my tray and stand up. Remember, this hand can be used for guidance. You can also rest it on your shoulder. As you get better and better at carrying a tray, you will not find you don't need to use this hand. You can even pick your tray jack up, walk to another part of the room, place your tray jack down, take a knee, place the tray back on the edge of the tray jack, reach under, make sure the tray jack is stable, and slide the tray onto the tray jack. After I have served my plates of food, I will have an empty tray. What you would do is you would flip it. And then when the next tray of food comes out, you would serve your entrees, or whatever course it is. You'll have another empty tray. Again, you would flip it. And you would go through this process until your tables are served. Then once your tables are served, and it's time to clear, you flip your top tray only, and you would clear onto that. Once it is full, you will kneel down, pick it up, and carry it off to the back of the house and you will proceed with this until you've cleared all the items from that particular course. And you would do this for each course. As you bring the plates out and, and serve them, you empty the tray, you flip them so you have a stack of trays. Then when it's time to clear, you use the same trays, you clear onto and take those items to the back of the house. When you clear plates onto your tray, you wanna make sure that you have everything that is heavy towards the center of the tray because you want a stable center of gravity. If you have too much weight to one side or the other, the tray will not be stable. As you bring your scraped plates to your tray, you will have one that you discard all your food onto and you will start to stack another stack of plates. Before you attempt to clear this tray and walk it out of the room, you must always remember to break your stack in half. Now your tray will be evenly weighted. Remember, things like silverware are very heavy also. You wanna keep them towards the center of the tray. Do not line them up on the outside. If you are carrying something light like glassware or coffee cups, you would put them around the outside. See the tray is very stable because it is evenly weighted. So this is a do not. Remember, always keep your tray evenly balanced. If I leave all my plates stacked to one side or a lot of heavy items on one side and 
non-heavy items to the other, my tray is going to be very awkward, and I want to demonstrate that. In order to carry this tray properly, you can see how far forward my hand has to be. I am not under the center of the tray, and this is now very awkward. So a simple practice of splitting our stack is all you need to do to get that tray stabilized. And now my hand is under the center of the tray and it is stable. Most of us do not have trays like this at home, and if you've never carried a tray before, you're going to need to practice with something to get comfortable doing it, because the first few times you do it, if you've never done it before, it's not easy. Most of us have large storage containers like this at home, or you could use a large empty cardboard box, maybe even put some books or some kind of weight in it as you get more proficient at carrying it. But just get used to putting it up over your shoulder and getting used to the feel of keeping it balanced. And then you'll be able to remove this hand and you'll be quite confident balancing it up over your shoulder on one hand. So any large flat item will work. Now we're gonna talk about carrying small trays. Um, on an event with PBS, you're typically going to be carrying a tray somewhere around this size or around this size. You're more likely to use something fancy, metal, uh, something shiny than to use something that has a rubber coating to it like this. And if so, these are a little bit slippery. You're most likely to be carrying wine glasses or hors d'oeuvres of some sort. But something to be aware of when you're carrying glassware is if you have nothing on your tray, if it doesn't have a rubber coating, then it tends to slide a bit. So this is something you need to get comfortable with and you need to practice um, so that when you're under fire, you'll, you'll be able to do it and you'll be able to be comfortable. So if you don't have a tray at home, some other things that you can use are, say, some sort of serving platter or even a cutting board. And you want to eventually get up to using wine glasses or something that's top heavy, but when you start out, you probably just want to use something that's not breakable, but still tall because these are a little challenging to carry because of the liquid and because of how tall they are. So be sure you practice this before you go to an event.